on stakes in the cave, so, which they never touched on that either. No, nope. like that was the bit that was the biggest questions that I had because they made it like the car was at that mine. Uh, and Virginia Madsen was like, oh, the car is there. That's where they were. And they go in and they find all this angelic scripture and angelic text writing drawn on the walls and a sleeping bag and just like littered with like food and stuff. But they never touched on who was there, who did it. And I'm sitting there like, was it the was it the uh, the colonel or the general? Because he lived there in the town. But like, why would he be having all these these like angelic visions and, and doing all these things it was just it, they never touched on it and it kind of upset me a little bit because i keep coming back to it trying to figure out and i just don't have an answer yeah there's not you know what's interesting with this movie is i know why it's a cult classic and i know why it has sequels mm-hmm. right because the ideas are there but when you all right so at the so this was me at the end of it so i just kind of thought so christopher walken is jealous mm-hmm. and so he's just He's jealous. Jealous and really, like, angry and hurt. So he like, wants je- them... Jealous is a good thing that, you know, God loves humans more, which goes into the jealousy, but it's not it, It's not just jealousy. Like, if, if, like if, if you're in high school and you got a crush on a girl and, like, you're friends with her and she likes you kind of okay, but she likes this other guy, bit, like, more, like, you're going to be jealous, but you're going to be angry, you're going to be hurt, you're going to be sad. Like, there's so much more that, that rolls into it. So, like, his kind of going against the grain or like try, wanting to like, you know, make this big war happen to, uh, you know, prove that he's better or just, you know, rain down his fury on these people that's, you know, taking God's uh, affection definitely makes sense. Like the motivation is there, but everything around it just kind of lacks in, in, uh, I guess, reasoning. Can I ask you a question too? I love it. Seven billion people on the planet. You have the most vile soul. Mm -hmm. The second most vile soul is not going to be that much less evil. (laughs) Based on what they showed of why he's the most evil? Yes. And you could go get, you could go get 20 through 50. And (laughs) like, you don't need number one. And they were really like it was funny like when when uh, when Kateas finally like found like that was one thing that was super funny to me is he was going through the guy's uh, apartment um, like trying to find all the stuff and he finds this like this lockbox and it's just wrapped in evidence tape so conveniently like oh maybe that's important maybe I yeah. should open up the thing that says evidence and bust it open and watch the video and it was he was in the war and he was a cannibal something happened he killed people he was eating bodies that video was one of the most funny things to me of just that showed because he was just kind of very uh stiff very frozen and he had like clear blood like all over his mouth and they were showing all these body parts and it was just very i don't know it was almost silly like it's supposed to be this like big reveal of this is why and it was so like they're just trying to like hammer it into you like, he's evil, he's bad, here's why, that it didn't – there wasn't that shock value to it. Yeah. I, I, I think I agree with you, like, with the, with the cult classic thing. It is, like, with as – arguably not as good of a movie as it is, there are some damn good lines in it. Oh, yeah. Like, that can that can make it a cult classic just uh, just alone. Like well, Viggo Mortensen um, and, makes and, it a cult classic. Oh, my God. That and when Walken goes full Walken and gets angry – and just some of the things he says, what was it? He was talking about uh, when, when he and Kateas first met in the church, and he was talking about, you know, you, how, how you got that little divot in your lip before you were born, before your soul came out. I told you a secret, and I said, shh. And then it came throughout the, the rest of the movie where he could just shush people to sleep or, like, banish them or almost kill them with just a shush. And I was like, yeah, that's pretty badass. Like, that's pretty, that's a nice power to have. It, um, yeah, it's, I mean, he's he, – walking is good in this movie, and I, I – you can almost sense his frustration that he didn't have much of a script to work mm-hmm. with in this movie. But I mean, this is a trailer movie, right? There's enough in this movie to make a legit trailer. So you have the burning, the the people sitting on the chairs, the explosions, that kind mm-hmm. of stuff. Oh, I think, yeah. I think where it faltered a little bit for me was just the 90s Pulp Fiction-esque vibe. If Mm-hmm. So, you know, just Adam Goldberg and the kind of stylish dialogue. If they would – so they – the why didn't wanted this to be a theological terminator? If you <laughs> think about that, right? It's it's that. Yeah, and, yeah and absolutely. If it, if it wouldn't have dated itself with some of that kind of 90s vibes in a few scenes, 
I think it could have had that. And it, it, I think it just, I think what it needed was to be much more lean, take place over two days, one day. Mm-hmm. Stoltz comes down, right? Tries to help. Mm-hmm. He gets he gets Sam Jackson in Deep Blue Sea killed off early. It leaves Gateus <laughs> to to rescue him, but there's a teacher. They leave immediately and are chased by these people, right? It could be a good road trip, but it, it stops in the middle to play trumpet and and like walk and drives into a chain, and he gets shot in a <laughs> like. Does that make sense? It really yeah. It, it could have been. It could have been lean, mean, duel esque. Steven Spielberg's duel esque, just lean and mean. And then you have cool theology, or you know, interesting like theology tossed tossed within. And then you have your closer, Viggo Mortensen. Mm-hmm. Could have been a solid ninety minutes, I think. I would say there was not much of a threat throughout the whole movie, too. Yeah, like like walk like it was very kind of back and forth with with uh you know i mean if you have an angel i mean if if you look at constantine you know the the angels that are in that or the demons that are in that like they're going around they don't they don't really give a crap they're killing they're throwing people through walls they're just like like monsters on earth right they can't be hurt they're these like super strength super just like immune creatures that know their power and use it on a whim and then you have Walken that's just like kind of whimsical and going through and he gets shot and he's just like, oh, I don't care. And like, you know, throws Kateus around the uh, the, the, uh, oh, the mobile it. home a little bit. I, and I like, hate like, it when like, villains doesn't throw people. Like, like doesn't even bust him through a wall, doesn't even break cabinets or anything and then throws him out the window. I'm like, if you're this like super powerful, strong, like, you know – you can rain people. down a hellfire archangel Gabriel and you're just like kind of ragdolling him in the RV like that's just it doesn't pose a huge threat you know yeah for especially he's looking for his key to win a war and yeah. he's tussling with Elias Coteus in a trailer park <laughs> it's not it's not I, listen dude I think the, what people like about movie, movies, films, and flicks is we go out of our way to not be the podcast that really hates on movies. And so that's why I keep going back to, like, the positive aspects of it. But, yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I, I guess what, when, I, when I rag on this movie a little bit, not rag, when, I, when we talk about some weird scenes, I just – I think it all comes down to wide and getting in over his head and – saying I'll get you these pages but then he has to direct and then he has all these actors on set and then you have to write pages but then you also have to direct your movie and cut it and it wasn't that long of a shoot a lot of the money went to walking so yeah I mean I guess it was but there's still there's still enough like there's still enough cool moments like I like when walking says oh, the one sure. thing I like about this conversation is we'll never have to have it again yeah that is a great line and he lights sure. him on fire I like the guy in the mortuary who is just super chill about dead bodies showing up in his place. And he's just super Mm -hmm. cool with Thomas Daggett, I guess. Yeah. You work work in the day shift and then he gets burnt like the whole, he burns the body. I think, (laughs) which was like, so not a big deal. Like no one was freaking out about this body that no one can explain. And it's burnt. And they're just like, "Eh, well, uh, you know, it's, it's a Tuesday, you know, it happens sometimes. It makes me wonder, like, has like, do bodies just go missing or get destroyed, like, in this place often? And they're just like, ah, well, you know, there's another one. Well, ah, mark it, up. mark it on the wall. We get lost another one. You know, put it up there. It was, yeah. And and again, I, I agree with you. I don't, I don't want people to think that we're that we're trashing the movie or ragging on it. It was just, I think it's more so like, there's a difference between ragging on a movie and pointing out certain flaws in an effort to show like what it could have been Mm -hmm. you know like there was there was so much potential in this movie and so many good lines like uh walkins uh uh scenes with stoltz and their conversation going through with it and even in that in the trailer park it's not trailer park it was in the middle of nowhere it was one little (laughs) little mobile home um but when he's sitting there and he starts going like starts getting amped up i wanted to see gabriel amped up throughout the whole movie not this just chill like i'm you know just walking through life and going through like when he started to get angry and just like you know walk as walking as walking could get and saying saying things like oh where is it i had it written down here Uh, i'm an angel i kill firstborns with their mama's watch i'm just like oh man here he comes there's the archangel there's the anger let's keep it going and then he just like chills down and make it like this 
art, you know, this huge thing that he needs to accomplish it and downplaying it into something that is just like, oh, I'll get it or I won't get it, which I guess could be also seen as like just he's so cocky and sure of himself that there's no way that he can mm -hmm. he can lose. You know, the, the biggest challenge was finding this soul. And then he once he found out that Stoltz found it, you know, that uh, uh, that Simon found it like the work is gone. He just he, like he's at he's like it's like the light at the end of the tunnel. And the only thing stopping him now is this, you know, now non-believer cop that he's like, oh, well, just, uh, you know, I, I, so I can see that being that it's not a big hurdle yeah. for him. So he's just taking his time. But, you know, if you've been looking for this thing for so long and this is the means to an ends for you to accomplish your goal, like there still has to be that urgency behind it. And I think that's one of the big thing in a nutshell that this movie lacked is the urgency. Right. And I know this sounds crazy. kind of across the board. You're, you're 100 percent right. And if you look at some of the best movies, Exorcist, there's mm -hmm. urgency to that. Right. Yeah. Uh, Get and this the, out of this girl or before she dies. Yeah, drag exactly. me to hell. She has a couple days before she's dragged to hell. The descent. Mm -hmm. it, you survive at all costs. Mm -hmm. So yeah. fallen. The thing is starting to pick his life apart. He has to act. And People so, are dying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you have, well, it's perfect what you said, and you you take out a lot of the urgency of it, and also they took away some of the agency out of Gabriel too, where he needs people to drive for him. And I think it's funny that he keeps bringing back suicides and they're all miserable because he just keeps them alive and he's a jerk. But by was, taking... was Rachel a suicide too? Yeah, yeah, she was a suicide. He was looking oh. at all of them, yeah. I saw, I saw, like, when he was looking through the things, and he, was, and, uh, he mentioned her, like, uh, like no hope for coming back, basically, or a lost cause. And he's like, ah, my favorite. But I, I missed the suicide angle. And she was all bummed. Wow. She's like, I saw a light. And she's why? Why do you want me? I don't want this. And <laughs> so, like, an eternity <laughs> that... in, a, in a skin bag or, uh, or one day helping me. I, and I loved in with walking with dealing with those guys, the, uh, I guess the revenants, I guess you called them, where they were, like, crossed over, but he brought them back. So they were you know, souls that were like on the, on the edge, I guess. And how he just dealt with them. Like they were just petulant children. Mm -hmm. Like when Amanda Plummer started to cry, he's like, no, don't, don't do that. Don't like, he was just like, so like, don't do that. Yeah. Like it was like, that's how I talk to my kids sometimes. Like when they start getting upset, like, no, I'm not dealing with this right now. Stop. It was just, it was, it was uh very, very funny to see, but yeah. Like why, why would an angel not be able to drive her for that matter? Why wouldn't he just be able to fly? wherever he needed to go like was that too easy for him like did he need a challenge in this whole thing which is why he needed to employ you know these these suicides these bodies that had just crossed over to do his things it just took the agency and it took the urgency out of the movie i would say mm -hmm. and listen like this is four three sequels four sequels so people obviously <laughs> dig it right people obviously yeah. dig this world but uh, the, i don't know i guess the promise of it and then I guess my another thing too is I guess you could have lost either Coteus or Madsen in this movie, mm -hmm. right? Because yeah. at the end when when Cotea, Cotea, or da Thomas Daggett is giving Catherine head smooches, you're like they've known each other for six minutes. I mean, why yeah. is he why is he head smooching her? You're kind of it's it, I don't know. You didn't need those, or you could have lost Stoltz. I guess you could have. <sighs> they had too many working pieces that didn't necessarily need to be as big of a of a portion well and, and going back again i know we keep referencing fallen but if you look at denzel washington and then um uh the the female character uh oh god her name is escaping me right now yes yes and beth i keep saying davids because that's the easiest thing for me to pronounce it but yeah and beth davids that might be right like she was in there and she was important mm -hmm. for the amount that she was in there, but she didn't have this like huge piece of the movie. She, when he, when they were together, she had the moments that she needed to like further the story, to shed light on certain things, and and uh, you know show that she was kind of a big player without overshadowing Denzel Washington. In this one, they tried to like even them out and put them on level playing fields, but I mean, if you look at you know, the cop that kind of knew what was going on versus just the school teacher who had a relationship with the with Mary, with the girl. Like, I mean, it's it's it got that importance there that without her, he may not have been able to get to the grandmother and then get to the, you know, the, the reservation and, and get to the tribe and things like that. But 
Yeah, I, I agree that just, you know, trying to put too many people in there just for, I don't know, 